Summary of Indian Camp by Ernest Hemingway The main character of Indian Camp, a young boy named Nick Adams, goes with his father and uncle to a lakeshore where they meet several Native Americans. The Native Americans row them across the lake and lead them through the trees until they come to a small shanty town, which is an encampment of Native Americans. They go into the first house, where a very sick woman is staying, and find that she is the only one there. Inside the lamplit shack, the crying mother is lying on a bed. Two days ago, she went into labor. Many of the older women in the town are helping her, while most of the men stay out of hearing of her screams. The father is sleeping on the bunk above her, smoking a pipe and tending to a cut on his foot. The room has a very bad smell. Nick's dad is a doctor, but he doesn't have any painkillers to help the woman feel better. He tells the older women to boil water, which he then uses to clean his hands and tools. He explains that the baby is coming out backwards, which means that its bottom is coming out first instead of its head, and he says that he might have to operate. After a while, Nick's dad starts the process. Uncle George and three other men in the town hold the mother down while Nick's father does the surgery. When the mom bites Uncle George, he calls her a squaw bitch. Nick's father was able to give birth to a boy in the end. During the process, he asks Nick to help and tries to show him what he's doing, but Nick can't see. After the baby is born, Nick's Uncle George says that Nick's father is a great man for doing the surgery with a jackknife. Nick's father says that he will come back with a nurse in the morning. Now that the surgery is over, Nick's father goes to the top bunk to check on the husband. He finds that the husband cut his own throat with a knife and that there is blood all over the bed. Nick's dad tells Nick's uncle to get Nick out of the shack right away, but it's too late, Nick has already seen the dead man. Nick's father apologizes to his son for taking him along on this trip as dawn breaks outside the shack. Nick then asks his father a number of questions about what happened in the shack. Nick's father gives short, deflating answers to each question. He says that births are usually easier, that the husband must have killed himself because he couldn't stand things, that most people don't kill themselves, and that death must be pretty easy. As Nick sits back in the boat and his father rows him away from the camp, the narrator talks about how beautiful the lake is in the morning. When the story is over, the narrator says that Nick, whose father was driving, felt quite sure that he would never die. About the author Hemingway was born and raised in a wealthy Chicago neighborhood. His father was a physician and his mother was a musician. He liked writing in high school, so he took charge of the school newspaper and yearbook. After he graduated, he got a job as a writer for the Kansas City Star. After six months, he quit to join the Red Cross Ambulance Corps and help people during World War I. About the author Hemingway was badly hurt while driving on the Italian front. For his bravery, he was given a silver medal of bravery. When Hemingway came back from the war, he was still under 20 years old. He got a job at the Toronto Star and moved to Chicago, where he met Hadley Richardson, who would become his first wife. In September 1921, they got married and went to Paris, where Hemingway got a job as a foreign reporter for the Star. Hemingway met many interesting writers and artists in Paris, including Gertrude Stein, Ezra Pound, and James Joyce. Around this time, Hemingway wrote Indian Camp and put it in Ford Maddox Ford's The Transatlantic Review. In 1926, he published The Sun Also Rises, which was the first book he ever wrote. He got a divorce from Hadley the next year and married Pauline Pfeiffer, with whom he had been having an affair, the same year. In 1928, they left Paris and went to Key West, Florida. Hemingway spent the next 10 years traveling and writing. In 1937, he became a reporter for the Spanish Civil War, where he met writer Martha Gellhorn. When Hemingway got back to the United States in 1939, he went to Cuba to live with Gelhorn and start writing For Whom the Bell Tolls, a book that was based on his time in Spain. When World War II broke out, Hemingway went back to Europe. There, he met another writer named Mary Welsh. After getting a divorce from Martha Gelhorn in 1946, he married Mary Welsh. In the years that followed, Hemingway's health got worse because he had a lot of crashes and drank too much. 
He was given the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1954. Hemingway shot himself at his home in Ketchum, Idaho, in 1961. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.